Chapman. A once secret air base in the Nevada desert is marking an unofficial anniversary today. <laughs> Area 51 was one of the most secretive places on the planet, but that anonymity vanished forever because of what happened 25 years ago. A controversial electronics whiz told a fantastic tale during a TV interview, and the story still reverberates today. The I-team's George Knapp played a part in what became an international <laughs> sensation. He's here with an update. Uh, setting the stage, Dave, you might not know this, but uh, 25 years ago, a young anchor woman <laughs> named Paula Francis and I were prepping for the five o'clock news when we learned that our scheduled live interview had canceled. We placed a call to aviator John Lear to ask if he could get a friend of his to fill the spot, a guy who reportedly worked out near Area 51 and had seen flying saucers out there. It sounded outrageous at the time, but that interview with Bob Lazar turned Area 51 upside down. We coaxed a reluctant Lazar into returning to Las Vegas to talk about it. I don't know. Sometimes I really do regret it, regret it and almost... I, I almost feel like apologizing to him, saying that, you know, I'm sorry I let things out. Can I have my job back? 25 years after he was forever transformed into Bob the UFO guy, Bob Lazar says he regrets ever talking about flying saucers or a secret base in the Nevada desert or any of the things that made his name known all over the world. If there isn't a day I, I don't get emails and, you know, I try and get this across to him. Look, I don't even want to talk about it anymore. You know, well, I don't believe the story. Great, pass it around. <laughs> you know, I really don't want you to because it makes life difficult for me. A quarter century ago, not many people outside of Nevada had ever heard of Area 51, the mysterious base 100 miles north of Las Vegas, a place the government said didn't exist. It was the location of choice for all manner of black projects, spy planes that were kept secret from the public. And that's my driveway, that's Bob, that's Gene Huff, and uh, Bob's wife Tracy and Chris. And uh, we're just waiting there for uh, 5 o'clock to roll around. Former CIA pilot John Lear remembers the day that Area 51 became a household name. This is home video he shot as a KLAS news truck prepared to broadcast a live interview from Lear's home. Lazar was understandably nervous. Yeah, he was nervous because he was putting it all out on the line there. And uh, here he was going to you know, reveal all this secret that he'd signed, you know, that he was going to uh, never tell anybody. It's uh, not only a crime against the American people. It's a In the interview, the Lazar's community. face was hidden, and he used a pseudonym, Dennis, which was the first name of his boss out in the desert. Well, there's several, uh, actually nine, uh, flying saucers. Flying Lazar claimed he worked intermittently at a location called S4 south of Groom Lake, the main facility of Area 51. He said the hangars had been built into the side of a mountain disguised as desert and inside were a set of nine flying saucers. Months later he revealed his identity to the world and said the technology he'd worked on was from somewhere else, that it was being taken apart to figure out how it worked. The reason that they're round and have no sharp edges is to contain the high voltage. When you get yourself in position... The information exploded like a bomb, and in the quarter century since then, the world has beaten a path to Area 51's door. Every major news organization in the world has written stories. The base has inspired documentaries and TV dramas. Dozens of books have been written, fiction and nonfiction, hundreds of news articles, many of them critical of Lazar and skeptical about his background. His tale launched a thousand product lines, every trinket you can imagine, along with assorted businesses, a AAA baseball team, and the world's only extraterrestrial highway running right past the entrance to Groom Lake. Uh, when you president, president Obama recently made a point of publicly acknowledging Area 51. Uh, what's really going on at Area 51? And former President Bill president, Clinton told Jimmy Kimmel he'd looked into those stories about space aliens. So first I had people go look at the records on Area 51 to make sure there was no alien down there. Even the Kardashians have made a trek out into the desert. That's a security guard. Look, look how that... that uh, you know, that story moved throughout the internet so quickly. And not just the internet, but, but news in itself. Like, it was in the first 48 hours after the broadcast, it was in Japan. Back in Las Vegas for a visit, Lazar recalls why he came forward in the first place. He had traveled to the S-4 base only a handful of times, but began to get scared. I began to get worried in that, boy, they've given me all this classified information they're not calling me anymore. They won't take my phone calls. And in the meantime, apparently, they're deciding what 
to do with me. Look how bright it's getting. Look at it now. For a variety of personal reasons, Lazar couldn't keep the story to himself. He shared his tale with John Lear and Gene Huff. They and a few others made treks out to the outskirts of S4 because Lazar said he'd learned when the test flights of the saucer would take place. Three weeks in a row, a glowing object appeared over the mountain. Look how bright it's getting. Look at it now. And just a few minutes ago, we saw one of the government uh, uh, extraterrestrial UFOs. The time when Bob said there would be a test, there was a strange light jumping around in the sky above the location where he said it would be at the time and date he said it would be. You know, here, the craft took off when I said it was taking off from past the, the mountain range, which was Papoose Lake, S4, south of Area 51, you know, in a restricted area. So it's not like anyone was out there with a model plane or anything. And, uh, you know, flew around in incredible maneuvers that impressed everybody to the point where we got scared and got behind a... Uh, a, a car fearing the thing was going to explode. But um, really, how do you explain it? It's bright right now. Lazar has more than his share of critics, including the poobahs of the UFO community who think he made it up. And he has holes in his background that have yet to be filled. But to date, no one has yet been able to explain how he knew those test flights would take place out there. Tonight at 11, we tag along as Lazar takes a tour of the Area 51 Museum exhibit that his story inspired. And over the next few days, we'll be adding material to our website, including the original series that we broadcast and some extended excerpts from this most recent interview. You remember that day? Oh, yeah. Backed off those original claims? No, no. Really Sa tells the same story right, right now. There yeah. you go. I saw a clip of our interview in Amsterdam in 1997. <laughs> Never <laughs> that dies. That was a shock. <laughs> great job then and great job now, yeah, George. Thanks, George. At 11, with Paula Francis and Dave Carvassier. The news of Southern Nevada is now. It's been 25 years to the day since a live interview with a shadowy guy named Dennis changed everything for America's most secret military base. Dennis turned out to be a Las Vegan named Bob Lazar, who claimed to work at a secret facility built into a mountainside just south of Area 51. The story started a UFO stampede that continues to this day. Lazar has tried to put the flying saucer stories behind him and has been discredited in the eyes of some critics, but it is a story that simply won't go away. We coaxed Lazar into talking about the last quarter century of UFO craziness. The I-Team's George Knapp has the story. What better way to unwind after a long day than a glass of Groom Lake red wine from the Ailey Inn? Maybe spend a few minutes staring at the paintings you picked up at the Area 51 art show, while perhaps listening to the Bob Lazar music video. The story that Bob Lazar told 25 years ago this week has gone around the world many times over, inspiring books and TV shows and movies. Who knew that Indiana Jones Warehouse is at Area 51? That sound you hear means Agent Black will be waiting for you. You're too nice. Another <laughs> repository of Area 51 lore is the exhibit at the Atomic Testing Museum. While in town recently for our interview, <laughs> Lazar took the tour. I guess I have to get a picture of that, too. It was a little surreal watching Bob Lazar as he saw tape of the first interviews he ever gave about his time working at S4. Later, as we plowed through boxes of paperwork about his claims, Lazar reiterated his preference that people don't believe his story. Look, I am not out there giving UFO lectures, producing tapes. I, this is not a business of mine. I am trying to run a scientific business. Um, and if I'm the UFO guy, it makes it really difficult. It's to my benefit that people don't believe the story. These days, Lazar and his wife operate a scientific supply firm in Michigan. He's received media coverage because of the odd stuff he sells online, but not everyone has made the connection to Area 51 and the stampede he started back in 1989 when he told of working at S4 south of Area 51, where he saw flying saucers so advanced they had to be from somewhere else. This is a model of the Reactor, he says, was able to generate its own gravitational field, powered by what he called Element 115. Barry turned on the reactor, which was a flat plate and half of a basketball, essentially, on it, just a uh, hemisphere. And once it was uh, activated, you could not touch the sphere. You put your put your hand on it, and just like the uh, like poles of a magnet, the exact same type of force. He had a, a little 
golf ball and you know we dropped it on it and you know it never hit the sphere and fell off and then you know you we threw it at it and it rebounded and knocked the ceiling knocked tile the ceiling out of place tile. but it was uh that it that alone is something amazing look that can change everything we know today. The story exploded among There's UFO researchers and just as quickly led to questions and denouncements. The I-team confirmed Lazar had previously worked at Los Alamos National Lab, but we also reported his claimed education credentials could not be proven. UFO experts, including physicist Stan Friedman, also dug into his background. They say, here's a bright guy. I did a lot of checking on him. I find a lot of things didn't check out. That doesn't mean I disagree with everything he ever said or that he was a liar all the time. It means that I can't buy the story as presented. What all he did out there, I don't know. Lazar says there's no end to the questions, and even if he could prove he worked at S4, someone would say he must have been the janitor. So he generally avoids the topic altogether. Oh, you just, do you want some of the fame? <laughs> the fame? You know, there's no big dump truck dropping money off at my house every Thursday night. There's no, I'm not out for any fame. I really have better things to do. Generally, people have to twist my arm to come out and do things like that. As you know, you're the arm twister. <laughs> Those who were around him at the time the story broke or took the trips into the desert to see the craft fly above S4 say, you really had to be there. Did you see that move it did? There's a MUFON moron that calls me every once in a while and he says, we well, don't still believe that guy, do you? And I say, I lived it. it. The whole two years, it was fantastic. It was one of the greatest times of my life. He would go through the trouble to make up a story to lie to people and then perpetuate that lie. Bob has no idea who won the Super Bowl in the World Series last year, do you? I mean, he's busy doing scientific stuff in, in the Bob Lazar world. He, he wouldn't waste his time perpetrating a lie on anyone. Look, I know what happened is true. There's no doubt, period. Lazar was known to have unconventional interests and a spotty financial record, so why would a top secret program let him in? One theory is that maybe someone predicted he would spill the beans and was chosen because they wanted the UFO story to be planted. Lazar told us he can't rule that out entirely.